Bible says in 1 John 5.19, we know that we are of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness. The whole world lies under the sway of the influence of the devil. Uh, Jesus said in John 14.30, Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. Jesus called Satan the prince of this world. Right. Ephesians 6.12 says, For we wrestle not. And you know, Raven Hill says, That's the problem, we wrestle not. But he says, We wrestle not <laughs> against yeah. flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Yeah. Ephesians 2.1 uh, You have the quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins. When in time past you walked, according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, yep. among whom we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 3. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not. Yep. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So, Satan is the God of this world. Amen. This is his territory yep. for now. And that Satan has power. Satan has authority. Jesus told... Uh, his disciples in Luke 10, 19, Behold, he is 18, he says, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions right. and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. <laughs> Satan has power. Acts 26, 18. And I want to point out that God didn't say he was going to do this. Uh, God commanded Paul to do this. He said to open their eyes in this order, to open there, everybody wants to go, uh, to, not us here, but in America now, the church, the, the so-called church, wants to do the last thing first uh, without doing the first thing. Right, but right. The, to open their eyes first right. and to turn them from darkness yeah. unto light, yeah. from the power of Satan yeah. unto God, yeah. that they, may, they uh, may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among them which are sanctified by the faith that is in me. So this world lies in the sway of the devil. That's and right. every Amen. sinner is a child of the devil. I tell you, I've met yeah. some uh, elderly, saintly, godly people that I have a hard time imagining uh, that they ever committed a sin in their whole life. Yet before these godly, saintly people uh, got saved, they were children of the devil. Right. Jesus Amen. told people in John 8, 44, people that he died for, he said, you are of your father the devil. First right. John 3, 8, he that's committing sin is of the yeah. devil. First yeah. John 3, 10, in this the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Right. Sinners, anybody that's sinning is a child of the devil. Amen. Acts 13, 9. Uh, then, and Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him, and said, O oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief, Amen. thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Ah. I tell you, Paul told that to a guy when he was full of the Holy Ghost. He called him a child of the devil. Yeah. And Jesus said in John 8, 34, Whosoever... <laughs> Now, you know what that word means, whosoever? It means whosoever. Uh, whosoever commits sin is the servant of sin. If you're committing sin, you're serving sin, not Jesus. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 24, no man can serve two masters. You don't hate the one and love the other. If you're committing sin, you love sin, not God. In fact, he didn't say you love God. It's not that you don't love him. He said you hate him. And Romans 6, 16 said, Know ye not that to whom you yield yourself, servants to obey, his servants are to whom you obey, whether of sin or the death, yes. or of obedience unto yes. righteousness. People can lip profess whatever they want to profess, Amen. but you are serving the one that you yes. yield to. You're serving the one that you obey. Yes. You yield to sin, you're serving yes. sin, not God. Not God. Jesus said, uh, Romans 
6.18. Being then made free from sin, yes. they became the servants of righteousness. Yes. I tell you, if you're a Christian and you're made righteous, you are free from sin. Yes. Yes. And, and you're, you're, you're free from sin. And you're no, you're, you're no longer a servant of sin. But John, uh, Romans 6.20, when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. Yes. You're either totally full of sin yes. or you're totally righteous. Yes. There's nothing in the middle. Nothing. Come on now. Right. No middle ground. Well, no man can serve two masters. Yes. Either they'll hate the one and love the other. There's no neutral ground. The Bible said in 1 John 1, 5 that God is light. Uh, and uh, John uh, 3, 18, uh, he, that, he that believes is he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. 19, this is the condemnation. This is why sinners are condemned. Not because they're victims, or not because they're ignorant. You know, they want us to preach in this country of people that had the Bible all their life, people that can quote John 3, 16 and judge not and all have sin. They, 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 they glamorize sodomy. They glamorize abortion. Yeah. They glamorize a, a, a rebellion. They, they want us to preach them like they're a bunch of bush natives out there that never heard the name of Jesus. Come they on, don't bro. abort their babies. They'd probably puke if they saw two homos kiss. <laughs> That's the way it was. But the Bible said in John 3, 19, this is the condemnation. Yeah. That light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hates the light. God is light. Everyone that doeth evil hates the light. Neither comes to light, lest his deeds should be reproved. And Jesus said in John 7, 7, Oh, you know, the only problem Jesus has with the Pharisees. Uh, but Jesus said, the world cannot hate you. Uh, the world is everybody that's not saved. The world cannot hate you, but me it hates. Why? Because I testify of it that the works that are evil. The world hated Jesus so much that they nailed him to a cross. Uh, yeah. And Jesus said in John 15, 25, he said, they hated me without a cause. Uh, they're not just poor, innocent Victims that are ignorant. That it's not their their problem is information. Their problem is moral. They're rebels. They're criminals. That's they're right. outlaws. They're wicked, and they hate God willfully and knowingly. Uh, John fifteen eighteen. Jesus said, "If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you are the world, the world will love his own. But because you are not the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you." If the world hated Jesus so much they nailed him to a cross and we're representing him and preaching the same thing he preached, then they're going to hate us also. Right. The Bible, uh, uh, Jesus said in uh, uh, 1 John 3, 12, said, Not as Cain was of that wicked one and slew his brother, wherefore slew him because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. Uh, right. The Bible says in Romans 6, 23, the wage of sin is death. Uh, and Romans 8, 6 said to me, carnally minded is death. Uh, somebody that's carnal, they get the same thing as a sinner. The wage of sin is death. Uh, people that are carnal, no such thing as a carnal Christian. Right. People that are carnal are not saved. Yeah. Governed by the senses, governed by the flesh. And then Romans 8, 7 says, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Uh, it's not possible for somebody to be saved and love God, and they're not in subjection to God's law. The Bible, the Bible said they're enemies of God. James 4, 4 said, You adulterers and adulteresses, Know ye not that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Proverbs 1.29 said that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. And we all know Proverbs 1.7 says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. That's the beginning of knowing God. They hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Job 21, uh, Job, uh, t t uh, uh, <laughs> Job 21, four, I got the wrong thing written down here. I knew that. Job 21, 14 says, Therefore they say unto God, Depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. 
So this is willful rebellion, willful enmity against God. Oh, Jesus said in John 8, 45, because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. I tell you, most of the time, you're telling people the truth, most people are going to reject the truth. Yeah. If everybody accepts it, everybody likes it, everybody thanks you for it, you're probably not preaching the truth. Right. And Second right. Thessalonians 2.10 right. says, And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, and then that perish because they receive not the love of the right. truth, that they might be saved. Right. Uh, oh God, help us to commit ourselves to seek the truth and not some belief system. Right. People commit themselves to some belief system. Right. Once they commit themselves and the truth contradicts it, uh, they, they'll reject the truth right. to defend right. their belief system. Right, right, right. right. <clears throat> For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. Who said that God sent them strong delusion? That they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned, who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Why did they accept the truth? Uh, they had, a, they had a, a personal agenda. They had an ulterior motive. They had pleasure in unrighteousness. They loved their sin. Right. <clears throat> Psalm 10.4 said the wicked through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Anybody's not saved, the Bible says they're prideful. They're right. proud. They're arrogant. That's they may right. come across as humble or have some humility about them. Obadiah 1.3 said, The pride of thine heart Come has on. deceived thee. A right. Bible, pride deceives. Uh, Jeremiah 9.6 said, Thine habitation is in the midst of deceit. Through deceit they refuse to know me. They refuse to That's know right, God. Uh, uh, 2 Timothy 3.13 said, Evil men and seducers shall oh, wax worse, worse and worse deceiving and being deceived. And Jesus said in Matthew 24, 4, in the last days, take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Oh, that doesn't mean they come, I mean, you know, some clown saying, I'm Christ. I mean, not many people are going to fall for that. Right. I'm talking about people saying they're coming in the name of Jesus. Right. Yeah. I'm talking about that they're from God. Talking about the real Jesus, yeah. but they're not of God. And their message is not of God. Did they call it Jesus, but they changed Jesus. It's not the Jesus of the Bible. Wow. Ma Matthew 24, 12. Many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Uh, you know why iniquity abounds and causes the love of many to wax cold? Because false prophets arise preaching a false message about a false Jesus, giving people a false hope. And 2 Peter 2, 3 says, Through covetousness shall they with vain words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not. Romans 1.18 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. That means they suppress the truth. They hold back the truth. They don't want to know the truth about God. They don't want to know the truth about their sin, their soul. They don't want to know the truth about uh, what the judgment that awaits them because that which may be known of God is manifest in them for God has showed it unto them for the invisible things of God from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even as eternal power and God it, so that they are without excuse. Uh, all right. If all people had his conscience in creation, oh. the Bible oh. said they're without excuse. Uh, because yeah, that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. Amen. Verse 21. Because that when they knew God, they yeah. glorified him not as God. Right. Right. They were thankful, but became vain in their imagination. And their foolish heart was darkened. Yeah. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Who to, that they brought God down to their own level, but they made a God, but they would condone their sin, condone their lifestyle, but they still call it Jesus. Right. Come on, brother. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of the flesh uh, to the side of their bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator. What do people worship in this country? 
They worship the creature. Uh, they worship people. They worship yeah. each other. Uh, they worship preachers. Uh, they worship movie stars. They worship rap stars. Amen. And this causes this causes the the, the abomination of uh, rampant homosex right off the bat. Right. For this cause, God gave them up on the vile affections for even their women to change in natural use. And that which is against nature. Uh -huh. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust, oh, one toward on another. Now. Men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meeked up. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate oh, mind God. to do those things that are not convenient. Not convenient. Amen. You know, the, the outcome, the result. The result about preaching a false God, making God into something that he's not, is rampant homosexuality. Yeah, that's right. The Bible says in Psalm 36, uh, 1 and 2, uh, the psalmist says, The transgression of the wicked says within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes. Yeah. For he flatters himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. You know why uh, the people in our society uh, think they're so great and I mean think that they are just so good that God would never send them to hell. You know why they flatter themselves in their own eyes until their iniquity be found to be hateful. The Bible says because there is no fear of God. Right. There is no fear of God because there's very little preaching that will bring the fear of God. Right, right. Proverbs 28, 14 said, Happy is the man that fears always, but he that hardens his heart shall fall into mischief. The Bible contrasts the fear of God with hardness of heart. Well, Bible, moving on. So this is what we're coming against here. This is what we've got to deal with here. Yeah. We're, we're, we're going into Satan's domain. Yeah. Uh, dealing with children of the devil. Children. that believe all kind of lies. They believe yeah. all sorts of stuff yeah. that they've been fed. And the Bible said in Ephesians 4.18, Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God uh, th through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, the pride of their heart, the hardness of their heart. And the Bible says in, in, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter three, 4, verse 3 and 4, If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, uh, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So they're, they're, because of their rebellion, because of their pride, they're deceived uh, and they're blinded. And we've got the commission in Acts 26, the first thing, to open their eyes. And the Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.26, uh, if peradventure uh, that they may, if peradventure God will give them repentance uh, to the acknowledging of the truth, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Well, Romans chapter 5, verse 10 says, For if when we, you and I, if when we were enemies, you and I one time were enemies. For if then, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. Uh, you and I need to be reconciled to God because we were enemies of God. Colossians 1.21 you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now is he reconciled. And then the Bible said in 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation to it that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. I tell you, God was in Christ reconciling these rebels back to himself. But now that we've been reconciled to God, uh, we're given the ministry of reconciliation. Yes. Forget about this 
gift of evangelism. It's not in the Bible. Right. So if you're a Christian, uh, you know, oh, you've been given the ministry of reconciliation. It's uh -huh. your responsibility. It's your job yeah. to go into this uh, uh, dominion of Satan and Good. break the yoke off of sinners and encounter their opposition and hostility and hatred and misunderstanding and slander and attempt to reconcile them to God. Uh, because of this. Uh, uh, the Bible said, Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. You know what that word preach means? It means to preach. Uh, Jesus said, Go ye therefore and teach all the nations. Uh, uh, where to go ye. Uh, the Bible said in Luke 14, 23, Go out in the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. Uh, John 15, 16, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. What are we supposed to go and do? We're supposed to go and preach. Uh, the Bible said in Titus 1, 3, But hath in due times manifested his word through handing out tracts. <laughs> manifested his word through inviting people to church. No. Manifest his word through preaching. First Corinthians 1 21. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. I tell you, people say it looks foolish, uh, but it looks foolish to those that are perishing, but it's God's ordained method for saving souls. Amen. Uh, what are we supposed to preach? <clears throat> oh, we're supposed to preach the good news, right? The gospel, right? Great news. Great news, right? For those that hate God. Romans 2.16 In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. You know, Paul's gospel involved judgment. Yeah, Revelation 14, 6 and 7. The angel had uh, the angel uh, preaching the everlasting gospel and saying with a loud voice, Fear God, give glory unto him, for the hour of his judgment is come. That's the everlasting gospel. Amen. 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 That's not all of the gospel, but Amen. the beginning of the gospel. Mark chapter 1, verse 1. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach. The baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. What was the beginning of the gospel? John the Baptist preaching repentance. Right. Oh, well, I don't want to be like John the Baptist. I want to be like, you want to be like John. But I want to be like Jesus because I'm loving. Right. I'm yeah. tolerant. Yeah. yeah. I'm nice. Okay, right. well, Mark 1, 14 and 15 said Jesus, Jesus came uh, 13 verses later or uh, 10 verses later. Mark 1, 14. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Amen. I tell you, a gospel without repentance is no gospel at all. Amen. That's like Amen. having water that's not wet. Yeah. Well, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Oh, that's John the Baptist. I want to be like Jesus. Right. Well, Matthew 4, 17, Matthew one John chapter Christ. later. From that time, yeah. Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right. Jesus right. said in Luke 5, 32, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Uh, you've been given the ministry of reconciliation. You're a new creature in Christ. It's your responsibility to do what Jesus did and call sinners to repentance. Uh, Jesus said in Luke 13, 3 and 5, I said, I tell you, nay, but except you repent, you will all likewise perish. So John the Baptist preached it. Jesus preached it. Acts 2, 38, Peter preached it. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Acts 3, 19, Peter said, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. No repentance, no conversion, no sins being blotted out. Uh, Acts 17, 30. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Uh, because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness. Paul preached it. 
picked up. Where upon the heavenly vision. Oh, God, give me a bit. God, give me a vision. <laughs> Acts 26, 19. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient on the heavenly vision, but showed first of them at Damascus and throughout all Jerusalem and all the coast of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works, meet for repentance. Uh, uh, Acts 26, 20, testifying both to the Jews, uh, uh, sorry, Acts 20, 21, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, uh, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. John the Baptist preached repentance, Jesus preached repentance, Peter preached repentance, Paul preached repentance, Mark 6, 12 said, and the disciples went out and preached that they should repent. Amen, brother. Amen. 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 Explode. And then Jesus told the church in Luke 24, 47, He said that repentance and remission of sins should be preached. Uh, and all, uh, uh, that repentance and remission of sins should be preached. It, it has, has to go in His name. In His name. In his name. Right. Repentance and remission should be preached in His name. To all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Right. Thank you. And we are witnesses of these things. Verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Before you go attempt to preach this message that's going to bring you opposition, that's going to bring you hostility. But before you go and try to set the captives free, before you go and try to advance the kingdom of God against hostile enemy territory, he said tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Luke 11, 21 says, When a strong man armed, keep in this palace, his goods are in peace. Come here. That strong man is safe. Oh, uh, he's got, he's got right. the sinners held captive. Yeah. When a strong man armed, keep in his palace, his goods are in peace. But when the strong man, he shall come upon him and overcome him. He taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusted and spoileth his goods. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I tell you, the stronger than he is, is Jesus Christ oh, and his spirit filled a Holy Ghost fire baptized church uh, stripping the sinner of all the armor, every hiding place, every excuse, every vain philosophy, every false idea about God, every flattering uh, self-image that they have, uh, stripping them of it. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3, uh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. Carnal means on the natural play. You know, I'll tell you what. Some of you might not like... Well, let me say it like this, for nobody gets mad. <laughs> it is possible. It is possible to chop down a tree with a very dull axe. Oh, yeah. But the sharper you get the axe, the easier and the faster you can get the tree cut down. Well... You can do the work of God and accomplish a measure of good on a natural plane. Just with the truth. The truth will get a measure of good done. No doubt people get saved. I mean, you know, people, people get saved uh, just from reading a gospel tract. No doubt about that. Amen. But I tell you, the Bible says, and this is not talking about our own mind. This is talking about the mindset of sinners. Right. This is talking about what sinners believe. The Bible says in St. Corinthians 10.3, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I tell you, the Lord Jesus Christ has given us the Word of God yeah. and given us the, the Holy Ghost uh, for us to seek uh, and, and, and hunger after and obtain to give us the Word of God and the truth of God to destroy every hiding place, every high thing, every proud lofty thing, every vain philosophy, every false image of God in the sinner's heart, mind, and conscience. Uh, Jeremiah, God told Jeremiah uh, to throw down, to tear down, yeah. to pull up, to root up, yeah. and destroy and then build and plant. Yeah. Yeah. Bible says, Bible says in Proverbs 11.30, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that win his souls is wise. Amen. James 1.5 said, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, 
that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. Well, the Bible said in Acts 6.10, the Bible said they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which Stephen spake. I mean, it wasn't just the wisdom of God that he had. It was the wisdom and the spirit behind it for, uh, forcing, uh, forcing the truth of God and uh, driving the truth into his heart, uh, giving him a heart wound, a soul wound, uh, uh, piercing and penetrating his heart, laying bare his heart. Uh, Jeremiah 23, 29 said, Is not my word like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? Matthew 21, 44, Whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. I tell you, we want sinners to fall on the stone and be broken in contrition. A broken with godly sorrow, fall on the stone and be broken. Psalm 33, 18 said, The Lord is nigh unto them that have a broken heart and save such as be of a contrite spirit. God only saves those that are made of a contrite spirit. Saints, they're going to be made of a contrite spirit uh, by a believer for the Holy Ghost and the Word of God and fire, a uh, pounding, hammering the Word of God in right. their heart, God breaking up the fallow ground, breaking that rock into pieces, yes. Yes. piercing Amen. power, a uh, projecting power, penetrating power, a uh, propagating power, purging power, purifying power. Amen. Bible said Luke 21, 15, Jesus said, I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. Amen. Amen, Father. Amen. You know, oh, I tell you what, I, one reason I'm preaching, I want to make us dissatisfied. I want to make us uh, seek after God. Oh, oh God. Seek after, Amen, Get Father. a hold of God. I'm, oh, very, God. I'm very dissatisfied. Amen. When I read what the Bible says, the church is Woo. capable of, and when I'm capable, what I actually see happen. It ought to drive us to seek after Whoa. God. Oh, yeah. Bible said in 1 Corinthians 1.17. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 1.17. Paul said, Christ sent me out to baptize Fuck with the priest of the gospel. Amen. Not brother. with wisdom of words, yeah. lest the cross of Christ should be made in effect. Right. Right. You know, I mean, after a while, so, some of this, uh, I don't know about some of you, maybe you're intellectuals, but I'm fairly said some of this stuff, your head just starts to uh, lean. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you got to be a, you got to be... <laughs> Listen, the Bible, it, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made in that effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is a I tell you, the simple preaching of the word of God with the power of the Holy Ghost is the power of God. And then verse 19, he said, For I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. I tell you, we can cry out to God for the wisdom of God and the Spirit of God and the power of God uh, for the Word of God to destroy the lies in the sinner's mind that keep him with excuses that keep him from submitting to God. Come on. 11, 13, if ye then be an evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? Ask and keep on asking. Ephesians 5, 18, be not drunk with wine in His excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Uh, ask and keep on, keep being filled. Uh, Acts yeah. 4, 20, Acts 2, 4 said, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Acts 4, 29, the same group there. Uh, persecution, opposition, hostility, uh, barriers, uh, uh, obstacles, uh, the, uh, the hindrances began to arise. And they said, Now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto your servants that with all boldness we may speak thy word. We only need boldness if people are going to hate our message and hate the messenger. Grant unto your servants that with all boldness we may speak thy word by stretching forth your hand and heal that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. Jesus. When they had prayed, the place was shaken when they were assembled together. That's and right. they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. I said they got filled. That bunch that got filled in Acts 2. They cried out to God and they got filled. Filled again. Yes, amen. Saved, sanctified, filled the Holy Ghost, and now saved, satisfied, and sorry. <clears throat> I tell you, it's supposed to be an ongoing, present experience. Uh, the Bible said in uh, John 6, 6 63, It is the Spirit that quickeneth, That's the flesh right. profiteth nothing. 
The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. I tell you, the word of God is, I tell you, it's not just truth. It's possible to have truth without life. It's possible to have truth without power behind it. But I tell you, the word of God. You know, the Apostle Paul said, Bible said in 2 Corinthians 2.14, Now thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor of His knowledge by us in every place. Amen. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and them that perish. To the one we are the savor of death unto death, to the other savor of life unto life. Those that love God were a savor of life unto life. That's Those right. that hate God were a savor of death unto death. We yeah. bring conviction upon them. Yeah. Yeah. The Apostle Paul said in uh, verse 16, he said, I want, I want to answer this. He says, and who is sufficient for these things? Yeah. Who is sufficient? I mean, right. you know, who's capable of doing this? For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but uh -huh. as a sincerity as of God, in the sight of God speak we in Christ. Chapter 3, verse 1. Do we begin again to commend ourselves? Or need we as some others epistles of commendation to you? Or letters of commendation from you? Verse 2. You are our epistle, written in our hearts, yeah. known and read of all men. I tell you, the fruit of Paul's ministry was living epistles, uh, disciples, people that had been affected, impacted, uh, influenced by his walk with God. Amen. You are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read of all men, for as much as you are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshy tables of the heart. Now, who was it ministering? Was it Paul or was it the Holy Ghost? Well, it was both. It, was the, it wasn't the Holy Ghost, uh, you know, working independently of Paul. It was the Holy Ghost working through the Apostle Paul as a vessel. Not the, and he says, he says there, and such, verse 4, such trust have we through Christ to God. Or verse 5, he answers the question, who is sufficient for these things? Not that we are sufficient of ourselves. To think anything is of ourselves. But our sufficiency is of God, who also has made us able ministers of the New Testament. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Not just the letter, not just the truth. Not the letter, but the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. And in verse 8 of that same chapter, he says, If the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more shall the ministry, uh, much more shall, the, how much more shall the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? I'll tell you, New Testament ministry is the ministry of the Spirit of God. No wonder why the Apostle Paul prayed in Ephesians 6, 19, For me the utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. No wonder Peter said in uh, 1 Peter 4, 11, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability that God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Saints, if the ability is not coming from God, if it's not coming from us, uh, the, the supernatural ability and grace and power of God, then God gets no glory for it. 1 Peter 1.12 Unto whom it was revealed, that not unto themselves they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. He talked about preaching the gospel with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. Peter, uh, uh, Jesus, uh, Luke 4.18 The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus said in Luke 15, 5, Without me you can do nothing. Zechariah 4, 6, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Isaiah 10, 27 said, The yoke is destroyed because of the anointing. Acts 10, 38, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. I 
tell you, Jesus uh, went about uh, healing those, delivering those who were oppressed the devil because he was, anointed the Holy, he was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power, and God was with him. Amen. Amen. Bible said in Bible said in 1 John 3 8. You know, we know the first part, he that committed sin is of the devil. The next verse says, for this purpose, the next part, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. But Jesus was manifested, the Bible says, to destroy the works of the devil. And that the Lord Jesus Christ lives in us and walks in us, then through us, we ought to be destroying the works of the devil. Right. The Bible says in uh, Galatians uh, chapter 3, verse 5, He therefore that minister to he therefore that minister to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you. He talks about ministering the Spirit of God, imparting the Spirit of God. Uh, Matthew, Matt, or the verse, the text we read, Matthew 6.10. We're to pray this way. And I mean, Jesus tells us to pray this way, it's because it's God's will. Hey, God wants to answer His prayer. The Bible said to pray this way. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. It's God's will for it to be in earth as it is in heaven. Is. And the Bible said in Matthew 11, 12, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Uh, and 1 Corinthians 4, 20 said, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. I tell you, the kingdom of God is a power, and it takes power to forcefully advance the kingdom of God by force. Come on. If there's no spiritual force behind it, the kingdom of God makes no advancement. <clears throat> John 16, 8. And when He has come. You know, these are the three things the Spirit of God comes to do. Yeah. And the three things we often hear nothing about. Yeah. Huh. When He has come, He will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my father you shall see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I have, many, I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. How be when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. He shall not speak of himself. Whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He will show you things to come. He shall glorify me. He shall receive a mine and shall show it unto you. Well, spirit... Spirit of God is going to convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment apart from us. Micah 3 8 said, But truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. Micah said he was full of the Spirit of God. Why? To preach against sin, yeah, to convict right. of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Uh, Peter was filled with the Holy Ghost and preached. Acts 2 37. When they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Said of Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Stephen was filled with the Holy Ghost in Acts 7. And he said, Ye stiff necked and uncircumcised and hard ears, you do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did so do ye. Bible said in verse 54, when they heard these things, they were cut to their heart, and they gnashed on them with their teeth. Verse 55, but he being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God, right. and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. I tell you, these men were full of the Holy Ghost. When they preached, it pierced and penetrated the heart. Yes, sir. Some of them got mad. Some of them got convicted. Right. Jeremiah 23, 22. I'm winding up here pretty much, just about. Jeremiah 23, 22. Jeremiah says, well, let me say Jeremiah 23, 18. Jeremiah 23, 18 says, Who has stood in my counsel and has perceived... And her, who has stood in the counsel of the Lord and has perceived and heard His word? Who has marked His word and heard it? Amen. Who has gotten in the presence of God and heard from God? Well, he says in verse 22, he says, If they had stood in my counsel. And, I mean, this is not just, this is not just knowing the truth of what God said, uh, but, but being the embodiment of what God said. Uh, in other words, uh, hearing what God said with the same mind, with the same spirit, or with the same attitude, or with the same feeling that they heard, that it, that it came from God's heart with. If they had stood in my counsel 
and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doing. If men are hearing from God and standing in the counsel of God, in the presence of God, and speaking as Paul said in 2 Corinthians 2.17, we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as a sincerity, as of God in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. Men are going to be turned from their evil way and from yeah. the evil of their doing. Acts 26, 18. I tried to talk about these others or to open their eyes first and to turn them from darkness unto light, from the power of Satan unto God, wow. that they may receive forgiveness of sin and an inheritance among them which are sanctified by the faith that's in me. Wow. God commissioned and commanded the Apostle Paul to do this. That's right. Through the power of God. can do this. Well, Matthew 28, 18. Mm -hmm. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye there. Now, I don't know. You've probably known this for a while. But I see two things here. I see both salvation and discipleship in this verse. Yeah. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's salvation. Mark 16, 16. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. The next part, teaching them to observe whatsoever things I have commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Let's look quickly, before we close here, uh, at the early church. Uh, the the, the Spirit-filled church. Uh, the, the praying church. The church that walked with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the church that the Lord Jesus Christ had free reign through. Acts 2.47 said, And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Uh, Acts 5.14 Believers were the more added to the Lord Multitudes both of men and women Acts chapter 6 verse 7 And the word of God increased And the number of the disciples multiplied In Jerusalem greatly And a great company of the priests Said the sinner's prayer no. <laughs> And a great company of priests were Obedient to the faith Acts 9.31 Then had the churches rest Throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria were edified, walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. Acts 11, 24. Acts 11, 20 and 21. The Bible said they were preaching Jesus. And then the Bible, and verse 21 says, And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. They turned from the power of Satan to the power of God. Uh, there was something, uh, there was converting power there. Uh, there was piercing power there. Yeah. There was penetrating power. The Bible said in uh, Acts 11, 24 about Barnabas, he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost, yeah. and much people were added to the Lord. The Bible says in Acts 16, 5, so are the churches, listen here, hear what happens when churches get established in the faith. <laughs> and so are the churches established in the faith, and increased in number daily. Acts 19.20 So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. What happened in Acts 6-7 when the word of God increased? The number of the disciples in Jerusalem multiplied. A great coming the priests were obedient to the faith. I pray this all the time. 1 Corinthians 3.6 Paul said, I have planted Apollo's water, but God giveth the increase. You know, when we preach, we've done our responsibility as far as preaching. We, we deliver the message, our hands are clean as far as delivering the message goes. But that's where it stops. Uh, we continue to pray for God to give the increase where we have planted and watered. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5, for our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. As you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And then Paul says, you became followers of us and of the Lord. I mean, this guy was vain, proud. You became followers of us <laughs> and of the Lord. We said, oh, don't, don't follow me, follow you. And I, and I say that, but I'm just pointing out the Scripture yeah, says. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah. You became followers of us and of the Lord. Having received the word of as much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. Verse 9. They themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you. And how you turned to God from idols 
to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he has raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. What was what, 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 when they when they preached the gospel, not in word only, but in power and the Holy Ghost? What was the end result of that? They, what was it? Their visit. They themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, how you turned to God from idols. The Bible says covetousness is idolatry. They were turned from their lifestyle of selfishness uh, to a lifestyle of love toward God. Finally, Luke, uh, Luke 1 15 says about John the Baptist, He shall be great in the sight of the Lord. He shall drink what, neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's oh, womb. Oh. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. He shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Uh, John, full of the Holy Ghost. What was the result? He turned many of the children of Israel, the Lord their God. He turned the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Thank you. God.